Hello friends, good morning and welcome to the Edisite Network. Our topic of discussion today shall be a continuation from yesterday where we talked about the portrayal of women in Hindi cinema part 1. So friends, uh, this is the following lecture, so this shall be part 2. So you could also trace the series and go back to it in case you missed the previous one. And uh, for this uh, lecture, we have with us in our studio our same subject expert, Dr. Manoj Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of History, Kirori Mal College, University of Delhi. So, with this uh, brief introduction, I welcome him to our studio and also request him to begin our today's lecture. Thank, Thank you, you, sir, for coming. Thank you. Uh, a very good morning to all the viewers. Uh, continuing from yesterday, we, where we discussed the portrayal of women in Hindi films, talking about a number of feminist film theories. And the ideas of Shomaye Chatterjee, who has done a lot of research on portrayal of women in Hindi films, and how these kind of researches, which have been conducted in America and Europe, they cannot be uh, the feminist film theories. They cannot be applied uh, to the Indian films because they have to be cultural uh, and society specific. This is what uh, Shomaye Chatterjee has argued, and at the same time, the kind of changes which have come over the period that how women they were portrayed during uh, the initial times uh, when it was considered that uh, to work in the films was a disrespectable kind of a job and you could not find women to work in the films and how over a period of time these kind of changes came that now uh, there are so many aspiring people those who want to work in the film industry those who are from diverse fields those who are uh, quite highly educated and then they want to work in the films in this kind of media or medium in which they can communicate or make uh, a lot of creative presentations for the masses. So, continuing from yesterday that how a number of foreign ladies they worked in the Hindi films by changing their names. Uh, for example, Nadia as we discussed yesterday whose original name was Mary Vans. And some of the Indian women they also started to work in the uh, films like uh, uh, we can see Fatima Begum who became the first uh, woman director and after that you also see the coming of uh, uh, another well educated Marathi lady Durga Khote. Uh, uh, she also worked in some of the films in 1930s and 40s and thereafter. And the arrival of Devika Rani who was wife of Himanshu Rai and uh, uh, who had who also owned a studio. Uh, and both of them, they made a lot of contribution uh, to the Hindi cinema. The kind of uh, uh, the films which they made during this particular period uh, with their uh, company uh, made, uh, for example, one was uh, Achut Kanya, which was made in uh, 1936. And after that, a number of films uh, like Karma, Throw of Dice, uh, even with uh, the kind of uh, collaboration with the uh, foreign film companies. So, these were the kind of changes uh, which we see which were uh, there in 1930s onwards and there was one film uh, called Dunya Na Mane which was made by V. Shantaram. Uh, Dunya Na Mane was made in 1937 and it was in Marathi as well as in Hindi and Shanta Apte who played uh, the central uh, character in the film, uh, she is tricked into marriage uh, to an old man and how uh, she re refuses to consummate her marriage and uh, she forces her husband uh, to recognize her uh, as her daughter because she says that uh, she will not consummate the marriage and uh, his husband is her husband is old enough uh, to be her father so this kind of an idea was very revolutionary keep in mind we were talking we are talking about 1937 and in the end in the climax scene the husband realizes that uh, uh, the divorces were not all that common during that, that particular period. So, he decides to commit suicide so that the woman could be free and she could remarry and she could be uh, free from uh, that particular sad marriage in which she was tricked into. So, these were some of the initial films uh, which had these kind of revolutionary themes and Shanta Apte uh, who portrayed this character. Uh, so, this kind of an idea was far ahead of its times as well because uh, what V. Shantaram tried to depict uh, in that film uh, was not in uh, consonance uh, 
keeping in mind the kind of patriarch patriarchal setup of the society was and it was quite common that men were marrying uh, young women uh, after the death of their uh, first wives, many of them who died in the childbirth. So, these kind of things they were happening during this particular period. And another film uh, which was made in 1939 uh, by Shantaram was, uh, uh, Shantaram was Admi. Admi was uh, a film uh, which was based on uh, uh, simple minded policemen's and uh, innocent prostitutes life. And this film uh, basically was some kind of a response uh, to the films earlier uh, which was titled Devdas. And Devdas was a film which was made by P. C. Barua uh, with himself in the lead in the Bengali version and uh, uh, K. L. Sehgal in the Hindi version. And this film was considered to be having some kind of impact on the Indian audience in a very negative way that a man falls into alcoholism because he was not able to achieve his love. And uh, Shantaram felt that these kind of portrayals were negative in character and a whole generation was uh, had some kind of negative impact on them. So, uh, what Shantaram suggested was that we should move ahead in life and through Admi he wanted to provide some kind of a positive message. And uh, in a way this film was an answer uh, to Devdas which was made in 1935. And Shantaram also raises a question in the film that uh, we have to look uh, within the framework that how uh, a prostitute he is more sinned against than a sinner. So, these kind of ideas which were uh, being shown during this uh, particular period in 1930s and this film was also considered to be uh, a film which was far ahead of its time. Another film which I would like to talk about is Brandy Key Bottle which was uh, made in Marathi as well as Hindi in 1939 uh, by Vinayak. And this film was uh, talking about uh, the issue of prohibition that how uh, the uh, liquor should be banned and how directly concerned uh, the women, uh, uh, women of uh, the family because the male members those who used to uh, take, uh, take those who were used to this habit of taking alcohol, they used to spend a lot of money and at the same time it created a situation at home where a lot of acrimony and violence and conflict could be seen uh, in uh, the when husbands they took alcohol. So, this film was talking about prohibition and it became quite close uh, 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 to the people uh, or to the women those who were not in favor of such portrayals. Some other films also they talked about certain aspect there was a film called Indrama uh, which was talking about uh, the issue of western culture clashing with the Indian culture. So, the issue of the western culture and the Indian culture uh, was talked about in this film. Then Andaz was another film which was made in 1949 uh, it was directed by Mehboob Khan and this film was a love triangle and it was making a powerful statement against the pitfalls of affluent Indian girls uh, taking blindly to westernized ways of friendship and love. So, this film Andaz which was made in 1949 and we have had a number of love triangles later on also. So, this film was talking about uh, the affluent or uh, the rich Indian girls and how they, uh, they are getting westernized in terms of friendship and westernized in terms of love. And how they were creating problems in their own lives and uh, they were having a lot of troubles uh, how people they were how the people uh, or the couple those who were involved in these kind of uh, relationships in the, all these kind of triangular relationships uh, they had all the problems of jealousy and how these uh, problems they were reflected in, in their marriages. So, these were uh, some of the films uh, which were talking about the aspects which were uh, related uh, to the issues of women. There was another film uh, by the title of Dahej uh, which was made by uh, V. Shantaram and Dahej was a film uh, which was made in 1950 and Dahej which means dowry uh, was a film uh, which was uh, which tried to portray uh, the, uh, the, uh, the plight of a young bride that how she was feeling uncomfortable in a house uh, where a lot of demands in terms of dowry were made and the husband is unable to deal with his uh, mother uh, who was uh, forcing him 
or the forcing the girl uh, to bring dowry and how uh, the father of the bride uh, was totally helpless in this case. And this evil of dowry is not, uh, uh, not uh, some kind of an evil during 1950s. This kind of problem is uh, there even now that we hear so many cases that how women they are being burnt, they are tortured, uh, kind of violence or uh, committed on them because they are not uh, getting uh, the kind of money which uh, the bridegroom's families uh, they want. And this is not true of uh, the poorer households. Uh, it is also true of affluent rich families where such kind of demands are made. So, this kind of evil is not only associated with the lower section of the society or the people those who are poor, but even in the people those who have a lot of money. The, but the question is associated with the issue of greed and this kind of greed was reflected in, in this film as well. And V. Shantaram, he argues uh, that uh, when this kind of film was made, so uh, he says that uh, I would like to quote uh, V. Shantaram. He says that when Dahej was released in Bihar, the members of the legislative assembly were shocked. I do not say that they were inspired by my picture, but I think that it must have been the cause of the anti dowry bill being passed in the Bihar legislative assembly. I do not say that my picture alone did it, but it happened immediately after its release when a great controversy was raised in the state. Then when the anti dowry bill was passed in parliament here, the members took the picture and showed it to all the parliamentarians and after a week or so they introduced the bill in parliament and it was passed. These bills helped to a certain extent, but unless you create this impact in the minds of the people, it is of no use. These pictures definitely have an impact. So, the Hage when this film was made, it had some kind of uh, contemporary uh, relevance as well that the people those who were associated with the issue of uh, making laws, they also saw such kind of portrayals. And when they saw such kind of portrayals, when these kind of films they were being made and people watched them, naturally they created some kind of impact. And when this kind of film was shown to the parliamentarians, the people those who were uh, in the parliament, how the people those who represented uh, the, um, the member of parliaments, those who represented the people in the assemblies, these people also got influenced by such kind of portrayals. And uh, definitely Shantaram also uh, realized this kind of uh, aspect that uh, people those who saw such kind of portrayals uh, must have been uh, influenced by uh, these kind of uh, films which were directly connected uh, to the issues uh, which were prevalent uh, in the society. Some of the films of Gurudat which were made during this uh, particular period, they were also sensitive to the uh, portrayal of women. For example, his film Pyasa uh, uh, which uh, he made, uh, he is trying to position a prostitute as some sort of a spiritual being. So, where the society is full of greed and the female protagonist uh, played by Mala Sinha uh, is portrayed as some sort of a materialistic figure, uh, uh, the filmmaker or the director is making some sort of a plea uh, that all kinds of human beings are there in the society and the people those who are rejected by the society, those who are on the margins of the society, they are not all that bad they had much more better qualities. And this kind of juxtaposition was made within the uh, context of two women, those who are uh, being shown in the film. And some other films of uh, Gurudat like Kagaz Ke Fool which he made and Sahib Bibi or Ghulam uh, which he made. And what we see in uh, Sahib Bibi or Ghulam, uh, uh, the portrayal of Meena Kumari uh, in the film was that she was addicted to alcohol. So, this kind of addiction to alcohol uh, was some sort of a rebellion also. She was rebelling against uh, the kind of norms of the society which were uh, patriarchal in nature and uh, in the film uh, she, uh, she was rebelling in, in, in a way in which she, she is taking to alcoholism. So, this is what uh, 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 Gurudat wanted to portray and this he tried to portray in a very uh, sensitive manner. And, uh, Though Meena Kumari uh, was uh, uh, from a, an affluent family and she was a daughter-in-law in a very affluent family in a zamindar family and even then uh, the way she has been uh, shown in the film or portrayed in the film, uh, it is some sort of a reflection uh, of a rebellion 
in the patriarchal setup of the society. And uh, as she is shown as a childless uh, in the film and uh, at the same time uh, she questions her husband for some kind of uh, sexual favors in that sense. And when she says it she also uh, affects uh, she also tries to uh, uh, portray that uh, on, uh, on the uh, on the issue of put, uh, impotency of her husband. So, these kind of issues uh, which are indicative in nature uh, were uh, shown in uh, some of the films which were uh, made in 50s and 60s. So, Sahib Bibi or Gulam was another important film uh, during this particular period. Another film which I would like to point out uh, is Sujata uh, which was made in 1959. So, Sujata was a film which was uh, dealing uh, with the issue uh, of a, a girl who has been raised in a family and uh, that girl was basically an untouchable uh, Sujata and an untouchable girl who is uh, brought up in a family which is an upper caste family and how uh, a groom, a bridegroom who has been decided upon uh, for, the fam uh, for the daughter of the house, uh, he chooses Sujata uh, to be his bride. So, this creates some kind of uh, conflict within the family and how uh, when the mother of the house she falls and how she is be being given uh, donated blood by Sujata and how this intermingling of blood uh, takes place and she also realizes her uh, folly and they unite in the end. So, this was also talked in the context of uh, the idea of nation building that uh, filmmakers uh, they were also in a way trying to help uh, the Indian political leadership uh, in terms of uh, nation building as untouchability, uh, issue of caste system, uh, these were all some sort of evils for the Indian society and these kind of uh, evils they were breaking up the society and it was not uh, ask, uh, it was not in any way conducive, conducive for the uh, development uh, of the society. So, the Indian politicians they wanted that all these kind of social evils even the people those who were associated with the social activity uh, they also wanted that these kind of uh, 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 social evil uh, they, they should be uh, sent to the dustbins, uh, but they were not possible uh, within the limitations of the society that people were not all that literate and in the, apart from that apart from the question of literacy uh, the kind of uh, social receptiveness in terms of these kind of changes was also not there. So, what we see is that Sujata was talking uh, in that sense that this kind of deliverance uh, which comes, uh, uh, this kind of deliverance uh, which comes of the heroine was also in the context that she is able to uh, marry uh, a person who is from a uh, high upper caste of the society or higher section of the society. So, this kind of patriarchal setup of the Indian society is being re-emphasized and the idea of nation building uh, could also be seen in some of the films. Another uh, uh, aspect of women that how women they have been portrayed as you can see on the screen is the issue of self-sacrificing mother. This issue of self-sacrificing of mother, self-sacrificing mother has been dealt in number of films. Uh, one could be Mother India uh, which was made in 1957. Mother India was the film uh, which was a remake of a film which was made in 1940 uh, by the same director Mehboob Khan. Mehboob Khan made a film called Aurat in 1940 and uh, uh, again he made the film in 1957. Uh, with Nargis in the lead role. So, this film uh, tried to portray women as some sort of a mother India, mother India in the sense that uh, uh, she in a way kills uh, her own son, so that she can defend the honor of the village. So, this kind of saving the honor of the village by uh, killing her own son and this film was uh, widely appreciated. And at the same time it was also considered to be some sort of a tool for nation building that how uh, a, a film like Mother India uh, where a village or a, 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 a family is some sort of a depiction of a nation 
So, that village becomes or that family becomes some sort of a depiction of the nation and her two sons both of them one is a uh, symbolic of good and another is symbolic of evil because her own son is trying to kidnap uh, a girl from the same village and how she overcomes the kind of problems which she encountered earlier this was shown in this particular film. Another uh, film which I would like to point uh, out is Aradhana uh, which was made in 1969. In Aradhana, Sharmila Tagore played uh, uh, the role of uh, the mother and how she became some sort of an ideal mother that uh, even when she comes out of the prison, she is not able, uh, she does not want to uh, reveal her identity. Even when she comes to know that uh, uh, her son, uh, uh, when uh, even when she comes to know that, uh, her, uh, that this is her son Rajesh Kanna who played uh, the double role in the film. And so, she also tried to portray uh, this kind of image where she is considered to be some sort of a self-sacrificing mother. Another film called Kati Patang which was made in 1971 and then Amar Prem which was made in 1972. So, all these kind of films they were trying to portray an image of self-sacrificing mother in some way which were made in 1950s to 1970s and in later portrayals also uh, these kind of images of women they were being made and at the same time there was some kind of an expectation from the people those who were uh, watching such kind of portrayals that they should conform to these kind of ideals. Uh, where uh, they have to be, uh, they have to be like uh, the screen portrayals. When they watch, watched those kind of images, uh, the women should conform to these kind of ideas, as the patriarchal norms of the society were uh, quite rigid uh, during this particular period, as we could see. One film I would like to talk about, a Bengali film uh, with the title of Megha Dhaktara, uh, which was made by uh, Ritwik Ghatak. Uh, Ritwik Ghatak was associated with IPTA, Indian People's Theatres Association, the cultural wing of uh, uh, the CPI and uh, <coughs> he also uh, participated in number of plays as well. And this film shows the paradox that how a working woman uh, in an impoverished family instead of realizing economic independence perpetuates her enslavement. And when the girl says that I want to live in the end when she is ill, she is making some sort of a cry for her existence. Because what happens in this film is that uh, the portrayal is of a refugee family, those who migrate to uh, one of the cities in, uh, in India, Calcutta and how uh, they, they have very economic hardships during this particular period and the eldest girl of uh, the family, she does all kinds of codes so that uh, she is able to uh, support her family. And this kind of support which the family gets from her, uh, it continues uh, for a very considerable period of time and the other members of the family, they are not able to realize her sacrifice and she faces a lot of problems uh, within the family. And finally, when she is ill at that time, uh, when she is sent to a crematorium so that she can recover, uh, she makes a cry in that sense that I want to live. So, I want to live is a cry of not that only particular woman because there are so many women those who are supporting their families and when these women they are supporting their families, then uh, uh, this is their cry as well because the kind of will which they have, the kind of uh, ideas they have in terms of living their own lives, they are not able to fulfill them. And when they are not able to fulfill those kind of ideas, uh, then they have this kind of feeling that what about their identity, what about uh, their individual lives, which they are not able to live because they have all those kind of responsibilities uh, which are there with regard to their families. So, this was an important film uh, with regard to women and at the same time uh, Ritwik Ghatak uh, when he made this film uh, was also uh, uh, talking about or also trying to portray the kind of pain which he uh, felt himself uh, when he had to migrate from uh, East Bengal uh, where he was he belonged and this kind of uh, rootlessness uh, which he felt when he had to migrate uh, uh, to, to the city uh, of Calcutta where he did not belong that way 
uh, was also reflected uh, in this film. So, this uh, was a some sort of a landmark film, uh, one of the films of his trilogy uh, which he made, Subarna Rekha was another film uh, which he made, uh, was part of the trilogy which he made and uh, Ritvik Ghatak was uh, closely associated with IPTA initially and his cinema had a lot of commitment and later Satyajit Rai, he said one of the his earlier films when it was not allowed to be uh, released, uh, Ajantrik and Nagrik, all these kind of films which were made by uh, Ritvik Ghatak initially. Satyajit Rai himself said if his films would have been uh, released before Pathir Panchali which he made in 1955, uh, which Satyajit Rai made in 1955, then uh, uh, those films which were made by Ghatak would have been the forerunners of uh, neorealism uh, in India. Uh, neorealism was a movement in the Italian films and how neorealist techniques they were being adapted uh, to the Indian films as well. Uh, there was a film called Guide uh, in which what we see is that the heroine uh, of the film Wahida Rahman, uh, she is dancing like a woman possessed uh, in a song uh, which says Dil wo chala, the heart that walks away. And when she is standing in a cave and she says, Main jeena chahati hun, I want to live. So, this kind of uh, cry could also be seen in the context of a film called Mega the Katara, which I have already discussed. And it was some kind of cry for millions of women, uh, those who have to suppress their talent and they have to languish in bad marriages. Because uh, the kind of ideas, the patriarchal ideas in the Indian society which are there, they, wanted, uh, they want to perpetuate this kind of image of women that if they have uh, married, uh, if they have uh, gone to a house in a palanquin uh, as we discussed yesterday as well, then they have to uh, come out on arthi. That is, uh, if they are married to a house, if they are married to a person, then uh, uh, their life will only be fulfilled uh, uh, when, uh, when their death will approach them. So, though they do not have to come out of their house before their death. So, these kind of ideas, the patriarchal ideas, they were quite prevalent in the Indian society. Another film called Satyam Shivam Sundaram made in 1978, where heroine is defining the true concept of beauty, where her husband also believes that beauty is only skin deep. So, these kind of ideas in terms of beauty etcetera, uh, they were discussed in uh, some of the uh, films uh, which were made during this uh, particular period. And what we see is that how songs they are being used. Songs as we have seen, uh, they are quite frequent in Indian films. There was a film called In the Sabha, which was made in 1972. It had around, uh, sorry, it was made in uh, somewhere in 1930s. And In the Sabha, it had around uh, uh, 72 songs. So, when a film uh, had 72 songs during that particular period, and even now we see that there are films which are which commonly have around 6 to 7 songs normally. And these songs are generally shot uh, maybe in foreign locations and how the film uh, films uh, music release takes place before the actual release of the films takes place. So, these kind of uh, associations uh, and these kind of inspirations within the context of uh, usage of songs has been from the Parsi theatre that how Indian cinema or the Hindi cinema has been influenced by the Parsi theatre and the other folk traditions like Nautanki, Yakshigan etcetera as well as uh, the kind of uh, uh, Jatras uh, which was another folk form which was quite prevalent in Bengal. So, these things which we see and how these kind of songs they also portray some kind of a desire or uh, fantasy of the people uh, and how they display that some kind of open affection is there between the man and women and how filmmakers are using the kind of alternative strategies uh, to uh, portray these kind of uh, images. Uh, one example could be uh, seen in the context of the rain, that how rain has been used in numerous films uh, we have seen that uh, rain has been used and uh, uh, to show the erotic content of the film as well as when you see it within the cultural framework, we see that the erotic and the sexual significance uh, or the sensual significance in Indian mythology, uh, classical music and literature. So, how rain is also associated with the issue of fertility and rebirth. And this idea of fertility and rebirth was quite associated with the issue of rain. 
and how even now we are so much dependent on monsoons and without monsoons our crops will not grow, how the fertility of the crops is associated and how the fertility of the human beings in the context of rebirth is also associated with the idea of rain. And a number of films they try to uh, use rain in the context of symbolism and at the same time the erotic and sensual con content uh, was in a way shown through uh, the idea of rain. Some of the films like Avara, uh, Shri Charsobis, uh, Satyam Shivam Sundaram, Mr. India. These were some of the films uh, I would like to point out in which you have uh, a number of songs which became quite popular and these songs they were shot in the rain only. So, how rain as a symbol in terms of uh, in the context of using uh, alternative strategies uh, to portray some of the taboo subjects uh, uh, which could not be shown on the Indian screen uh, were done by the filmmakers. Another important aspect uh, which has been associated is on the issue of ban on kissing. That kissing was generally not allowed to be shown in the later films uh, after independence, but what we see is that kissing was uh, frequently allowed in the films which were made in the colonial times because colonial censorship authorities were not concerned about the issue of sensuality and violence. They were more concerned about the issues of uh, political, uh, political themes or the nationalist themes. Uh, on which they could have some kind of danger. So, these kind of uh, scenes in which uh, kisses were there, for example, there was a film called a Throw of Dice, Karma etc. in 1920s and there was a film called by Ezra Mir in which uh, kiss was used in every climax scenes for around 42 times. So, all these kind of images they were using uh, such kind of uh, technique, but in later times it was not allowed and uh, it was considered to be some sort of a taboo and it was considered to be an issue which was associated with the issue of westernness and Indian films were to be differentiated uh, in the context of Indianness and uh, Indianness was not allowing these kind of images which were dealing with the uh, issue of westernness. So, some kind of contradictory attitudes they were there uh, with regard to kissing and how the erotic display of female body was done uh, in a number of scenes during this particular period and this could, could be explained uh, within the context of the ideology of the public sphere. I would like to point out uh, 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 a quote from uh, Madhav Prasad who has done a lot of research uh, on Hindi films and he argues that female body as a spectacle is a public representation, a show of erotic imagery for the public that does not violate the code that prohibits the representation of the private. This is because such a spectacle occurs in song and dance sequence which are conventionally coded as contracted voyeurism rather than an unauthorized view of a private world. Kissing on the other hand and by extension the details of sexual relation between two people belongs to the realm of the private. So, Madhav Prasad is talking about uh, the issue of public sphere in the private sphere and that how the issue of kissing is in the realm of the private and this uh, kind of uh, issue should not be sh shown to the masses. So, this is one uh, kind of interpretation that why Indian cinema uh, was uh, not uh, in favor of these kind of uh, portrayals, but at the same time we have to realize uh, that these kind of uh, presentations even when they were not resorting uh, to the idea of kissing, but the, the way female body was presented, uh, uh, the, how the vamp was uh, uh, who was playing a character, how she was a cabaret dancer or uh, how she was a courtesan. So, there was a lot of focus on women's body in later films and even now uh, you see that uh, the arrival of the item songs in uh, almost uh, each film or there are so many films in which uh, where, where female uh, protagonist or important female actresses they have been roped in. Uh, to uh, perform an item song, so that film becomes quite popular. Uh, one of the important uh, 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 film historians or uh, feminist film historians, uh, Laura Mulvey, uh, she makes a point within this uh, context and she says that uh, how in their traditional uh, exhibitionist role, women are simultaneously looked at and they are displayed with their appearance coded for strong visual and erotic impact. So, they can be said to connote 
to be looked at ness how women they have to be looked at and women they have portrayed uh, the way women they have been portrayed they function on three levels the original gaze of the camera then erotic object for the characters within the story that how the people those who are uh, within the film they view that uh, female character and erotic object for the audience those who are watching the films in the cinema hall so this kind of idea is associated uh, with the issue of male gaze and this male gaze was always dominantly and significantly placed in the film so what we see is that the issue of male gaze was important and how women they were trying to cater to the issue of male gaze and this kind of idea of the male gaze was central to the film and it could be seen in the kind of portrayals in the later times uh, as well in 1960s and 70s the kind of uh, uh, the arrival of uh, uh, arrival of certain heroines like mumtaz sadhana etc asha parekh etc etc and when these kind of uh, leading ladies of the films uh, uh, how they came and the kind of dresses the tight uh, uh, salwar kameezes uh, which they were wearing the kind of falls eyelashes uh, which they had and the kind of so song and dance sequences in which they were participating so this kind of changes which came in the uh, fashions and the styles uh, that was also very very uh, important during this particular period and what we see is that all these kind of images they were quite uh, stereotypical in nature and the, uh, all kinds of uh, changes within the theme and the content uh, they were not all that impressive within the context of portrayal of women as we see during the later times when with the arrival of the parallel cinema in some of the films in 1970s we see that there was a film called mehboob ki mehndi pakiza which was made in 1971 by kamal amrohi these were all some of the films which were associated with the courtesan films the courtesan films umrao jaan was another film which was made in 1981 by muzaffar ali and these uh, courtesan films their focus was also on women's chastity and all kind of conformity in the context that a courtesan was from a good family and the circumstances forced her in this kind of profession so all this kind of stereotyping was carried on so what we find is that this kind of stereotyping became quite frequent in all, in, in almost all the courtesan films Uh, which were uh, made during in 1970s and 80s and uh, the films even uh, when they were making some kind of break uh, finally they were making some kind of uh, conforming to the social ideals at the same time the patriarchal values of the society uh, they were also safeguarded even in these films uh, if, when you see the case of pakiza when you see the case of umrao jaan or the case of mehboob ki mehndi in almost all these kind of films uh, uh, the female lead generally is from a good background and how she has been forced by the circumstances and how her chastity has been maintained all these kind of ideas uh, could be seen in almost all these films uh, uh, some of the new wave directors new wave cinema or the nouvelle vague nouvelle vague uh, was a uh, some kind of a Uh, film wave or the new wave which came in the fi film uh, films in france in 1960s uh, filmmakers like godard uh, they were associated uh, with the new wave so within that context some of the films were in india uh, were also made and filmmakers like uh, mani kaul and kumar shahani uh, they were also associated with the uh, new wave cinema of late 60s and 70s and uh, when these people uh, they made such kind of portrayals which were associated with the new wave they tried to uh, portray images in a realistic way and at the same time the portrayal of the women was comparatively much more realistic uh, 
uh, in these kind of images uh, which were uh, made by uh, the new wave uh, film directors and this movement uh, later faded in uh, later faded in uh, 1970s but it made an important contribution in some uh, of the uh, middle cinema which was made uh, later and some of the uh, film heroines those who got associated with this middle cinema like Shabana Azmi and Ismita Patil uh, they became uh, quite popular and when you see the mainstream cinema even in the mainstream cinema uh, Jaya Bahaduri Shabana Azmi also acted in some of the uh, mainstream uh, films and even Ismita Patil in uh, Namak Halal uh, she, which was a mainstream film in which she acted and did a lot of justice. Uh, though she died at a very young age of 31, but the kind of mark which Ismita Patil left uh, in her film career uh, within the context of uh, playing various characters is uh, quite remarkable. And uh, Jaya Bhaduri's films like Abh Abhiman and then Mili, uh, then in a film even called Zanzir, in which her uh, the way she has been portrayed uh, was comparatively quite different uh, from uh, the characters uh, which you could uh, find in the earlier films. So, she is trying to, uh, the way she was being presented, uh, some kind of identity of woman uh, was shown in these kind of uh, characters and portrayals. So, what we see is that uh, new wave films, they were portraying the social realities and Sham Benegal's uh, films like Angkor, Nishant, Manthan, which were made in 1970s and Bhumika in 1977 in which is Smita Patil uh, played the main lead and in Angkor you had uh, Shamana Azmi. So, all these kind of films uh, they, which were a new genre in the context of uh, middle cinema uh, were quite popular uh, during this uh, particular period and these uh, new wave filmmakers uh, they were making a lot of contribution within the framework that uh, how, how women they were being portrayed and Govind Nehlani was another uh, filmmaker who was uh, an important uh, uh, director in 1980s. One important film uh, which was some sort of a reform film I would like to talk about was Prem Rogue which was made in 1982. That how a widow uh, who Padmini Kolapuri who played the female protagonist role, how she becomes a widow and Rishi Kapoor who played the main uh, uh, hero in the film, uh, he is ready to marry a widow. So, this kind of uh, uh, debate in the context of conservatives, uh, conservatism and modernity uh, could be seen that a protagonist is ready to marry a widow. Uh, this is the question in 1982, this film was made in 1982, it, it was uh, quite unique in the context that in even, even in 1982 uh, such kind of things were not happening. Though the reform movements were launched within the context of uh, widow remarriages uh, in 19th century itself, but uh, the kind of plight of women uh, those who are widowed in uh, and they have been sent to um, in Mathura uh, or Banaras uh, uh, their condition is very uh, pathetic. So, uh, these kind of portrayals they raised certain issues uh, with regard to uh, the portrayal of women uh, and the condition of women within the Indian society. Another important Hindi filmmaker uh, was uh, Sai Paranjpe and Sai Paranjpe made uh, some of the films uh, which with the title of uh, Sparsh uh, which she made then she made a film called uh, Katha as well. And, uh, some of the films which were made by Sai Paranjpe was uh, were liked by uh, some of the uh, by uh, large uh, uh, audience uh, within uh, the Hindi film fraternity. And uh, new wave also affected uh, some of the films uh, which were mainstream in nature. And these mainstream films uh, which we see is that Pratighat which was made by N Chandra uh, was a film uh, uh, which was quite liked by uh, the masses. Shani by Harmesh Malhotra, in which Kali Ganga, Khun Bari Mang, all these kind of films which were made during this uh, period in which protagonist, female protagonist was sh shown to be some kind of a ven vengeful creature and, uh, uh, and she was also quite hardened. It was trying to portray women as some sort of a vengeful creatures uh, who is an hardened uh, and she wants to take some kind of revenge for the kind of excesses uh, which have been uh, committed on her. And these kind of uh, portrayals uh, 
they were quite uh, 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 some kind of a break from the stereotypical roles that how earlier they were shown as submissive and dutiful wives and these kind of portrayals were some sort of a break in that context. In 1970s and 1980s what we see is that uh, uh, some of the films which were uh, which could be called women centric films uh, were also made um, in, in the mainstream Hindi films uh, in which you have Rekha Madhuri Dikshit and Karishma Kapoor. And uh, in many in some of these films uh, where uh, there was a film called Khub Surat in which uh, Rekha played the uh, part of the female protagonist and film is focused largely on uh, her. But even in the end she has to conform to the kind of patriarchal traditions that uh, a woman has to take some kind of responsibility uh, within the household and she cannot be only associated with fun and frolic but she has to be a responsible member of the uh, family. And finally, when uh, the film ends uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of image uh, of a responsible woman uh, she conforms to. So, in the end this kind of conformity was shown uh, though the question was raised within uh, some of the mainstream Hindi films. And Madhuri Dikshit initially uh, who uh, took part in a number of films do, who, who became hero in a number of films uh, which were uh, associated with uh, usual song and dance phenomena. Uh, but she also uh, uh, made some kind of uh, appearances in some sort of a meaningful and purposeful cinema uh, in a film called Mithyu Dand. And in Mithyu Dand uh, she makes uh, a lot of uh, effort in the, in, in the context that uh, the portrayal was very very authentic realistic and forceful and it had a lot of uh, some sort of an impact for the future generation as well that uh, in the mainstream cinema you find uh, some of the films which were associated or uh, uh, impact uh, or had some kind of influence of these uh, ladies those who were or the film heroines those who were associated with this kind of cinema. Then another important uh, uh, actress who has made some kind of contribution is uh, Tabu uh, who has played an important character who has played important characters in a number of films uh, be it uh, Astitu in which uh, she is she has made a uh, strong mark as well as what we see is that the balance of glamour as well as uh, the kind of serious acting which could be found in Tabu was uh, uh, quite remarkable. And in many of her films for example, Chini Kam in which uh, she was there then Virasat, Chandni Bar the kind of portrayals which have been done uh, they have been quite authentic in nature. And another film called Makbool and Heather uh, for which she got awards also uh, she, she has been able to justify her character. Uh, she is not uh, a female protagonist uh, who is there uh, for the sake that a female protagonist is required, but she is into the skin of the character. And this is how her portrayals are all very authentic in nature in the films which uh, 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 we have discussed. And at the same time uh, her portrayals are the kind of characterizations which have been done. Uh, are also keeping uh, the kind of acting potential which she has. So, all these films they also made some kind of uh, important contributions uh, to uh, the Hindi cinema. One film which I would like to talk about is Deepa Mehta's Fire. It uh, created some sort of a public outrage when this was released because women they were shown in non-conforming roles uh, within the context of <coughs> the patriarchal setup of the society and this film was talking about women's rights, preferences and the issue of women's sexuality. So, the question of women's will or women's will became quite important in this film and Deepa Mehta not only made this film, she also made a film called Water, she also made a film called Earth 1947 Earth which was based on the theme of partition. So, her characters which are shown in the film they have their own individuality and even if their roles are uh, for a very limited period of time the kind of portrayals of women in her films 
they have some sense of purpose. Uh, in all the uh, three films, uh, some sort of a trilogy, earth, uh, water and fire, which uh, Deepa Mehta has made. Then what we see 1990s is uh, some of the films which were made for the NRI audience like Dilwale Dulaniya Le Jayenge, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, Kal Ho Na Ho, and Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam. All these kind of films which were made in 90s and 2000 and these films uh, how they were made for the NRI audience and uh, how they were all in some way sugar coated for the diaspora audience. And in these kind of portrayals also uh, women they have they, they are generally shown in the context that how they have to conform to the Indian traditions and these kind of Indian traditions they have been time and again uh, given to them uh, through the patriarchal setup of the society. <coughs> in many of the films which are uh, recent in nature, we see that some sort of a different portrayal of women uh, have been shown. He heroines they have been shown as uh, bold, uninhibited, they are skimpily clad and promiscuous in nature in some of the portrayals. And, but these kind of images they do not hold the idea of empowerment of women because empowerment of women characters is not taking place rather they are being reduced to a prop uh, to satisfy the male audience. And all these kind of dance numbers in the context of Sheila, Munni and Chikni Chameli all these kind of popular items the, the women they are being degenerated denigration of women is taking place in these kind of uh, images where female body male gaze and voyeurism and uh, and the item numbers are all relying on these kind of things. So, these kind of uh, images uh, they should not be uh, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they should not be uh, they should not lead or they will not lead to the empowerment of women and women they should uh, portray those kind of uh, characters in which uh, they will have some kind of uh, empowerment where they are able to show their acting skills, where they are able to uh, portray some kind of purposeful character in the film. Some other important themes which have been explored in contemporary cinema and these the contemporary cinema for example, there was a film called Jism which was talking about the issue of uh, sexuality, it was a film which was made in 2003. Then the issue of infidelity was discussed in a film called Astitto which was made in 2000 and this film was also making a statement about hypocrisy in the society that how we are so hypocrites in the society and the patriarchal norms of the society they are not able to provide some kind of living and breathing space to women. So, women are they have to struggle for their astitto, astitto is their identity. So, the question of women's identity was quite relevant in the film and the speech of Tabu finally in the climax scene was quite stirring where she is making a plea that how she was not all important in her husband's life, how her husband was associated with the issue of money earning and how she was not able to lead a, a, a normal life where she could have her husband by her side. So, the question of family, the question of her identity, question of her space, uh, uh, all these kind of issues were raised in this film which was directed by Mahesh Manjrekar. Then the question of surrogacy in which there was a film called Chupke, Chupke Chori Chori in which uh, uh, Preeti Zintra, Rani Mukherjee and Salman Khan they played roles uh, though it was a light hearted uh, kind of a romantic film, but this issue of surrogacy uh, was discussed in the film. Another impo important film was Philhal which was dealing with uh, the women's issue uh, uh, which, uh, which was made during this particular period and uh, there was a film called Salam Namaste uh, uh, which was made uh, 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 on the issue of uh, living relationships. And another film in 2007 with the title of Chakde. Chakde was a film which was dealing with the issues of women's lives that how uh, the women those who are uh, the central characters, those who are the part of the hockey team and how they have to fight within their own families, how they have their own challenges in their lives. Some of them they are from a very rural and a poor background, some of them are from uh, uh, rich and affluent backgrounds, but they all each of them they have their own challenges in their lives and how they want to come out of their challenges 
and they also achieve uh, some kind of fame when they are able to defeat their challenges and they are able to carve out an identity of their own. Madhur Bhandarkar uh, is uh, uh, one filmmaker who has made uh, certain films uh, 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 which are uh, not conforming to the social norms and some of the films like Chandni Bar, Satta, Corporate, Fashion, Heroine, these are some of the films which have been uh, made by Madhur Bhandarkar. And in all these kind of films which have been made by Madhur Bhandarkar, female characters are uh, quite, uh, 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 quite empowered and they are trying to show uh, some kind of identity uh, for the uh, female characters. Uh, and he is trying to come out of the stereotypes which are there uh, in the Indian society. Uh, there was a film called Lajja which was made in 2001 by Rajkumar Santoshi and Lajja uh, three stories were there simultaneously and some of the issues like domestic violence, dowry, sexual exploitation, male domination, female infanticide and women's low status. All these kind of issues uh, they were discussed uh, uh, in this film and uh, it was an important film in the context that time and again uh, this uh, film uh, talks about the various issues uh, which are related and quite relevant for the Indian society. Uh, Water was a film which was based on the plight of the widows which was made by Deepa Mehta. All kinds of protests they broke out when uh, water was being shot uh, and it was not allowed to be shot in Banaras and the plight of uh, widows those who are living in Banaras in Mathura and this film was later shot in Canada. So, these kind of films they were dealing with the issues of hypocrisy of the society. Another film which I would like to talk about was Babul and Babul uh, was also dealing with the issue of uh, widow remarriage and how conservative elements in the film uh, uh, they were dealing with uh, uh, dealing with this kind of issue they were not ready or they were not uh, in favor of widow remarriages. Some other films uh, which have been made like Chameli, Pa, Ishkia, then Dirty Pictures, No One Killed Jessica and Kahani etc. English English in which Sridevi has played ro an important role. So, all these films they were uh, talking about these kind of issues. Anurag Basu is one director who has made a film called Murder, Life in a Metro in which all these issues they have been taken up. So, I would like to conclude the lecture here. and. I would like to say that uh, new films uh, in which uh, new heroines those who have worked uh, they have tried to come out with new kind of ideas and concepts and uh, these kind of images are quite empowered and uh, they have definitely made some kind of positive contribution to the portrayal of women in Hindi cinema. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much sir and of course you have clearly summed up for us what uh, is the crux of these two lectures that we have had uh, trying to see how women are portrayed differently in uh, different kinds of uh, cinema and uh, whether it be mainstream or uh, art cinema. So friends, uh, with the little or no time left, I would like to thank sir. Thank you so much sir and please keep being associated with us. And thank you friends for watching. Have a great day.